Hey, glad you guys are here. So I realized I haven't done a home lab tour in like 10 years, so we're gonna do one. But before we go inside the house, let's start on the outside of the house. I figured we start on the outside of the house because this is pretty much where everything starts and ends. So we have two internet connections, one through AT&T Fiber and one with Google Fiber. My AT&T connection is pretty much for the entire household to run things like an Apple 4K TV, the TVs themselves, laptops, gaming PCs, whatever it may be, just your typical household stuff is run off of this internet connection. And then I also have a Google Fiber connection and this is where SPX Labs or all of the home lab stuff actually runs out of. And it's pretty cool to have two separate internet services so that way we can kind of separate the home from SPX Labs. And also if I'm constantly tinkering with one set of hardware, I don't have to worry about disrupting everybody else on the house. So this is a one gigabit connection and a 300 megabit connection. And this is overkill. This is still overkill. Everything works perfectly fine. Now let's move to the inside of the house and actually check out the equipment itself. All right, let's go down the hall and take a look at the server closet itself. I think it's important to start here because that's pretty much the core of everything. So in here, of course, we have all of our networking and hardware equipment, servers, all of that stuff. So starting at the very top, we have our AT&T gateway and our Google Fiber jack. This is obviously where the internet comes in. Now the AT&T Fiber gateway is connected to the UDM Pro and the UDM Pro pretty much is the tool that does everything from UNVR, IDS, IPS, and just all that typical stuff that you would find uh, with like a home router or well, I guess enterprise router in this case or whatever. Below that we have the 24 port switch. Uh, this runs the entire house as well. So it powers the cameras. It powers all of our devices in the household, like everything I mentioned before. And then I took a page out of Craft Computing's um, playbook and I have blue and white cables. The blue cables signify that those are powered ethernet cables and the white ones are primarily just for data. Below the 24 port switch, we have the 10 gigabit switch and this one kind of has mixed use. So the 10 gig switch connects to the home lab portion or SPX labs down in the studio and also connects to all the equipment below us. And so that one is also connected at AT&T, but from time to time, I'll disconnect it and connect it solely to the Google Fiber. It just kind of depends on what I'm doing at the time. So that's pretty much that. Now we're gonna move down and take a look at all of this stuff. So let me pull this out so we can get a better look at it. So this is my, I think this is 24U network rack, and it's probably one of the most versatile racks in the entire home lab because it performs multi-roles and functions. So. Normally I have my network test equipment on this rack and solely on this rack, but lately I've been accumulating a lot more, so I have two racks now. So at the top of this rack, we have some of the TP-Link stuff that I test from time to time. I'm not currently using TP-Link, and as I'll show you later, uh, but I do have their router and a switch in here that I do periodically use uh, from time to time, depending on what I'm doing. At the top here, we have a Dell 7920, and this is a rack mount workstation. This is pretty much a server that runs the household 24-7, 365, does things like be our media server, it hosts games like Valheim, Minecraft, Project Zomboid. It has our pictures like family photos and videos, as well as, um, you know, like tax documents, other important stuff like that. And then this gets backed up to this server. Both of these run Unraid. They're basically one-to-one, -one, but this server also has a function of storing all my YouTube videos. So all of the YouTube videos that I've pretty much ever made are also on here. And this server backs up this server, so it's a little bit more redundant. YouTube videos I'm not too worried about losing. So far in 10 years, never lost anything. So I think that's fine. The server below it um, typically runs Unraid as it's my Unraid test server that I typically use in most of my YouTube videos. But it also will run other operating systems depending on what I'm trying to accomplish for certain YouTube videos but 99% of the time it just runs Unraid. And I think it has like an old Intel CPU, like a 5960X or something like that in there. Uh, it's pretty, pretty old, but still great. Works to say all of this stuff is 10 gig capable. Uh, we have a 10 gig cable at the top of the closet and then we also have a 10 gig switch that I'll show you later. So all of that can interrupt at 10 gig speeds. And then below that we have two Eaton UPSs. The Eaton UPS at the top does or powers all of the equipment at the top of the closet, all the networking equipment. 
So that way in the event of a power outage, then every equipment can run for about 40 minutes. So let's say we're streaming something on like HBO or whatever it may be. We can pretty much finish any content that we'd like because this provides so much power. And then the second UPS is identical to this one and it provides power mostly specifically to the R7920, but it also provides power to these, but these are typically turned off. So we get about 40 minutes of runtime when these servers are powered off just for this one alone, which is pretty awesome because if we're watching a movie on Jellyfin, well, we can typically finish it too if we need to. All right, let's go take a look at one of the next rooms and uh, so I'll talk about it from there, let's go. Moving to my wife's office area, this is significant for a couple of reasons, but mainly because there is network equipment here that she uses as well as this is her workspace. So she does have a laptop that's connected to our Ubiquiti access point, and then she has a gaming PC and a printer that are connected to a Ubiquiti switch. Now everyone knows that I hate Wi-Fi, so I've decided to connect all of her stuff to this switch, primarily because the connectivity is a lot stronger and I don't have to worry about any, any like sort of drops or interference, especially if I'm trying to print something. So that ubiquity switch is powered over ethernet from everything in the network closet. And that means we don't need to have any adapters or anything like that, which keeps this whole space pretty clean, I think. So let's move over to the studio and check that out. So going into the SPX Labs studio, this is where all of the magic happens and where I do all my gaming and editing, pretty much everything that is SPX Labs. So this space has changed a lot over the years and I've kind of made it my own as the channel has grown and I'm finally at a place that I really like its setup. So I have like a little workbench area over here that I can use with my laptop or some piece of hardware and a monitor. So everything's just like really quick, easy access for just quick, easy testing. And then all this can also be connected to anything that also sits on the server rack itself. And of course, behind me is my wall of stuff with everything that I find pretty interesting. And, you know, starting with my like Halo stuff, it's actually kind of like a journey through time now that I think about it. I just thought of that literally on the spot. Anyway, so we have like my Xbox stuff. I have the oldest graphics card I've ever owned. Um, it's a NVIDIA 9800 GT. I've got some, you know, Nintendo stuff. I have these sweet cards that people have sent me, you know, saying thank you or whatever, whatever it is. So I always put those on the wall because they're kind of special to me. The oldest router I've ever owned. This is actually the first router I either bought myself or was bought for me. I'm pretty sure I bought it. And like I've had it with me all these years. I can't get rid of it because it's a very iconic piece of history in my opinion. And then there's some like, you know, other stuff. My favorite books, they're mostly Halo books. I have other books as well that I'm really interested in, but mostly Halo. My favorite games, these are the only hard copy games that I still have to this day. So they're not all of my favorite games, but just the hard copy versions I still have. So I have like some manuals for my other favorite PC games, uh, Command and Conquer, as well as Age Empires up here. Graphics cards that I've owned over the years that still work to this day, thank goodness. Tools for various jobs or whatever I may be doing. They mostly just sit up here to be honest, but they're, you know, whatever. And then just more general stuff, more tools and things of that nature. Now, I did want to call out these special things up here because I've owned them for years and up until maybe like two years ago, wasn't really sure how to display them or use them. But what's really funny about these special cards is the strength one, the glass on the strength is actually broken. So if you kind of imagine that you had the strength special and you were putting it in a frame, you just broke the frame because you're also too strong. So I think that's really cool and cute. Um, I guess on this corner of the room, we have uh, the door that I've turned into a soundproof, soundproof door or sound resistant, whatever you want to call it, door. Uh, these are just moving blankets and behind the moving blankets is, is this really thick pillow as well as a bunch of egg cartons. This is a total custom job. I think it does a pretty good job for a custom job in my first like real DIY kind of thing. I didn't make a video about it because I thought it'd be pretty boring, but it does a great job of keeping heat in here and keeping sound out. And as we move this way, so this is my whiteboard that I use for like ideas. Right now I have a couple of videos that I have in mind that I'd like to do. Um, and yeah, it's just a whiteboard for ideas. In here is my storage junk closet, I guess, that does a lot of different things. I stole this from my wife. Uh, this is her shoe holder organizer. I don't know what it's actually called. Her shoe holder is what I call to it. I used to have a giant tub of cables. I know every one of us has a giant cup of cables that we've been holding onto for years and years and years. 
Well, I finally got rid of mine and I kept basically the ones that I thought were most unique or most important and organized them from networking to video to those old video standards to, you know, power and just different like connectors that I might need or adapters I might need all the way at the bottom. And I highly, highly recommend getting one of these if you don't have one instead of keeping a giant tub. This is, this is really awesome. I'm really glad to have that. Inside the closet itself is basically just more junk. We have graphics cards, games, a Nintendo, and bo empty boxes with stuff that's supposed to be inside them, more books. Uh, we have stuff that I'm trying to sell and stuff I'm gonna give away and things I'm gonna install, just all sorts of things in here. It's just literally general storage. I also keep some of the shirts that I wear. You guys have seen these. So I generally you know, cycle through all these different shirts when making content. I have my costumes in here for when it's like Halloween and then also some decor that I changed throughout the year to kind of keep the wall of stuff uh, different or seasonal, I suppose. And then there's also packaging material, just, just tax documents, like literally anything that I'm not really sure where should go. I try to keep it organized in this closet. And of course on the wall behind me, uh, this is just a blank wall. Normally like right along here, I keep my tripods. They're all kind of in use right now. The biggest, Thing, or most advantage thing I did was put these lights up on the wall because they used to the tripods used to stick out and take up so much floor space and all of this used to feel especially small this room is already small but it was even smaller when there's tripods all over the place there's you know the people that have watched this video for a long time might remember that in that corner of the office was a shelf with tons of boxes from ceiling to floor and it just really made this whole space feel claustrophobic. So it was really important to try and get all of these lights up on the walls to try and free up some space, and thankfully it did. So I was able to actually move my gaming PC and my editing rig over here in this corner, and now when I sit down, I can see out the window, so it doesn't feel so claustrophobic. Let me move this chair out of the way so we can take a better look at this stuff. But the chair out of the way, we can actually take a look at my gaming, streaming, editing work area. So this has changed a lot over the years. I've really tried to reduce the amount of clutter on there because I've just been feeling really claustrophobic in general. And so this is kind of the current setup. Now, for those of you that watch or keep up with the channel, you realize that the gaming desktop is now back on the desk and not currently sitting on the rack that I'll show you here in a second. So the reason for that is because the 14700K, I've had a lot of issues with it. It's been crashing, I've been RMAing it, and I just got sick and tired of dealing with it. And I'm also afraid that due to heat, it'll die too early because Intel already damaged my CPU and I don't want to kill it off any sooner than they already are doing on my behalf. So the gaming de PC is back on the desk and you know, luckily it doesn't feel like it takes up too much space because I do have the monitor here and that does block the view of the gaming PC, so I'm not, it doesn't really feel claustrophobic anymore, especially since this monitor has a use. I have a Mac Mini on here as well, and I have to, I used to be able to share one keyboard and one mouse between both the Mac and the gaming PC, but I no longer can do that because I actually used to have two desktop speakers that caught on fire and also must have caused some sort of short and it broke my USB switch that I used to have to switch between one keyboard, one mouse, one headset, and one microphone and one camera between both my gaming PC and my editing Mac. Uh, so I don't have that anymore. I'm just kind of cycling between things as needed. It's really clunky, but honestly, it doesn't bother me too much and hasn't been an issue so far. So let me move this desk out of the way so I can show you this rack uh, and we can take a closer look at that. Oh. I really like that everything is on wheels. So if I need to like do anything special, it's really easy to rearrange this room. So it's really cool to have stuff that's on casters. It makes just rearranging the room super easy. So here is my test rack, and this currently runs everything that is SPX Labs on it. And right now, SPX Labs is running on all Alta Labs equipment. So I have their router, the Route 10 at the top, and also their 16 port switch. And like I said, you know, the gaming PC, the editing rig, it's currently all connected to this. And then this also runs all the way back to the server closet. So that way I can have a connection as well for any servers that I might have in there. So. There's also a TP-Link switch in here. This is our 10 gig switch. So everything in here is 10 gig capable, including the gaming PC and Mac mini. 
So it's important to have one of those. Right now, Alta Labs doesn't offer anything that's 10 gig, so I will have to switch between these two things depending on what I'm doing. And of course, here is Sliger's 3U uh, chassis. It's currently empty that used to house the gaming PC, but not anymore. At the top, we have my oldest server that I've had probably since 2009, 2010-ish, back when I used to farm Bitcoin or mine Bitcoin. Uh, it's like a du dual core Intel G something. I really don't remember. It's probably got like two gigs of RAM or something, something really small on it. Right now, I'm kind of using it as a test server. I plan on making a video in the future about ID, IDS and IPS, and I plan on including this in that video. So that's kind of why it's up here on the rack. Normally, this would be in storage somewhere, but it seems like a good fitting place for it since it still has some wife left in it. Uh, I don't really know what else there is to show you in here, and that pretty much wraps up everything in the studio. Okay, actually, I did think of one more thing. So. I mentioned earlier that this connects, I get a connection into here and then back to the server closet. Well, a long time ago, I decided to run two additional ethernet ports in here. And I'm glad I did it because having like extra switches just to establish connections between this room and that room would be kind of janky. So this yellow cable signifies that this is the AT&T line. So I always know that AT&T is here. And then these two black cables are for Google Fiber and also SPX Labs. So basically we have internet coming in through the middle and then this connection on the bottom connects me to everything that's in the server closet. So I can go back and forth between both sets of equipment and still have internet on both sides depending on where the router is. In this case, my router is in the rack right here as opposed to the TP-Link router that's in the server closet right now. <sighs> that is all, goodbye.